welcome back to the channel and I'm here this week with another educational or whatever you want to call it tutorial video about the bass trombone. Before we get started with this video it helps the channel so much and it costs you nothing if you click the little subscribe button down below. So recently I've been seeing a lot of posts asking about different ranges of the bass trombone saying oh this note is very low what's the best way for me to feel more comfortable in that register or this note is very high what's the best way for me to feel comfortable so I figured I'd make this video as a very basic guide of how to expand the register of the bass trombone and how to connect each of the registers together so that you get one seamless effortless range of the bass trombone I wanted to break this video up into two parts though. First, a guide for composers so that composers understand how to write for the bass trombone. And then a guide for trombone players to be able to access all the ranges and again, to be able to connect them effortlessly. So the bass trombone has a massive range when it's used correctly. If you're a composer, you can use the bass trombone in so many different ways, be it part of a soft chorale or as an explosive low end to the orchestra. Most modern professional bass trombonists have a comfortable range of three plus octaves. As you can see from that example, I just stretched from F1 to A4, which is a wide, wide range for the bass trombone. You can use all these notes, but the most optimal range of the bass trombone lies just above the bass clef staff to a few ledger lines below. One thing for composers to keep in mind, though, is that not all notes are made the same on the bass trombone. For example, it's relatively easy to do triple tonguing on the note B flat above the staff. It's nearly impossible to do the same thing on the F1 way below the staff. Another thing that I see from especially young composers who are still figuring out what to do with this beast of an instrument is that they keep the bass trombonist in the upper register often. This is what separates the tenor trombone from the bass trombone. The tenor trombone can stay above the staff consistently for 8, 12, 16 measures. That's okay for the tenor trombone. But it's rather taxing on the bass trombone to be above the staff for an extended period of time. So if you find yourself writing a passage that, like I said, 8, 12, 24 bars, where the bass trombone is playing above the staff, maybe consider giving it to another instrument. Again, it's not like the bass trombone can't do this. It's just that what you're after might be achieved better by being in the tenor trombone or a low French horn part, for instance, or cello. The rules for bass trombone range change slightly if you're talking about a virtuosic solo piece. For example, there's a great history in the American tradition of theme and variations for brass instruments. Especially trombone, we have Arthur Pryor, who's uh, one of the great tenor trombone virtuosos of his time and probably of all time. Um, so we have some pieces for bass trombone like that. Um, the most one of the most famous being Barnacle Bill the Sailor.
when we're talking about virtuosic solo pieces, now I, I need you to be careful because this is the highest and most challenging repertoire for the bass trombone. We can talk about a range of B flat zero to F five. Not many bass trombone players can go above F5. There are people out there, but F5 is a quite a high note and B flat zero is quite a low note. So if you're using those notes again, keep in mind that a B flat zero is not made the same as a B flat three, right? Um, you cannot tongue on B flat zero. It, it might be a note that comes out, but it's not the most solid note. And it certainly can't be part of an articulated passage. Again, one more thing, keep in mind that this type of range, this very extended range, should only be used in virtuosic solo repertoire, almost never in the orchestra and occasionally in the big band or more commercial music. So now at this point of the video, I'm going to start getting into a guide for bass trombone players. So if you're a composer, you've already gotten all you need. I'm not going to talk any more about that. So you can head out. Bye. Okay, now that they're all gone, <laughs> let's talk about our usable range as bass trombone players and what we need to be able to play some of the more modern music we see in the trombone choir, in the jazz band, and in the orchestra. So you may be sitting there and saying to yourself, hey, Ryan, I thought you told composers earlier that our highest note is an A4, but I play way higher than that, first off. <laughs> um, I've played Franck Symphony in D minor, which has like a thousand of those in lyrical melodies. And I, I've played Kodai's Herr Janosch, which has high B natural, B, B natural four. Uh, so that's way above, you know? And I'd say, yes, you're correct. Those are written. <laughs> And they're out there and they're in the orchestra um, and they're definitely playable but I'd ask you would you want composers knowing that that's a comfortable note for us so all of a sudden you show up to read a new orchestra piece and there's B naturals B natural fours all over the place and you've got these soaring lyrical melodies that should probably be written in the French horn part so you've got to be careful when you're talking to composers about range because they might get the wrong idea right if you can tell them you can play the double pedal B flat they might write it for you. <laughs> and if it's not in a virtuosic solo piece, like I said to them, it's not really appropriate in the orchestra. Well, maybe sometimes, but not all the time. So again, I tell composers this range of F1 to A4 because all those notes are pretty comfortable for me. And if I saw them in the orchestra in most circumstances, I would be able to play. Again, I don't want to tell composers that I can play B flat zero because I've showed up to orchestra reading sessions, you know, of young composers who write F5s and they write accented pedal D flats all over the place with no room to breathe. Um, and, and I want to avoid that. So be careful when you're telling your composer friends, say you commission a piece from a composer friend, be careful what you tell them what the range is. You know, we do have a really, really wide range, but we do have limitations as well. So I'm going to show you some exercises in this next section, though, to be able to expand your range as much as possible and then to be able to connect these registers seamlessly so that you get one fluid range for the bass trombone. That way, if a composer does write you something crazy, you have a good shot of being able to handle it. So when we're talking about opening the register down, we obviously start where is comfortable, so maybe that's in the staff or just slightly into the valve register. But I think of the low range in two registers, basically the valve register below the staff and then the pedal register, which connects into the extreme pedal register, we'll call it. Both of these are equally important these days. Again, I've showed up to trombone choir readings where you have pedal C's, you know, and, and you've got to be able to play it mostly comfortably, right? So it's important that we have a solid valve register, and then we can extend it down into the pedal register and feel comfortable moving back up and back down through both of these ranges. 
So with the valve register, in my experience, I use what's called a shift to feel most comfortable playing notes in the valve register. Some people swear that the shift is extremely helpful and some people swear that the shift is terrible and um, you shouldn't do it because there's no way to connect. But I've, I've found that the shift helps me to feel more solid on these notes and that I can move in and out of the shift comfortably by doing a few different exercises. We'll talk about those in a second, but first, if you are a person that shifts, it's very important that you can do your shift on more than one note. For example, if I shift always at the F below the staff, there's gonna come a time where I need to move in and out of that register without being able to shift. So I have set up my shift over six, seven, eight different notes. I can play eight different notes in both shift positions so that if I need to shift through a melodic line, say, I'm able to do that without too much issue. The other part about the shift is that I actively plan where I'm going to shift in every piece of music. Every piece of music is different. So for example, you might shift on the B flat in the staff in this piece of music. And on this piece of music, you might shift at the low F. And on this next piece of music, you might move your shift way up to the D flat. So again, keeping a nice overlap of the shift where there's seven, eight, nine notes that you can play in both shift positions makes it so that the shift is not too much of an issue. I'm gonna show you some examples right now of how I worked that out. And then I'm gonna show you another example of how I worked moving directly through the shift at any given time. So as you can see, I've played a bunch of different notes in both shift positions with long tones. That helps me to feel confident in both shift settings. Okay, the next thing that's really critical with using this shift into the valve register is that you need to connect it back up to your middle register. And so to do this, I use an exercise that was shown to me by Gabe Rice, my incredible professor at Boston University. Um, but I play chromatic scales, double tongued, and I play them quickly, and I play them without caring about cleanliness. Why? Because I just want to make sure that I'm able to shift quickly and seamlessly up into the middle register and then back down into the valve register. So check out this exercise here. <laughs> So this exercise to me is crucial because it's helped me so much, so much to connect the valve register to the middle in the staff register by moving in and out of my shift. Okay, so now that we've connected the valve register, we can talk about the pedal register and the extreme pedal register. This goes below the valve register, starting at the pedal B flat and going down, you know, to the double pedal B flat, if, if you like that note. Um, so to open up this register, I use a couple of different exercises that mainly focus on connection and air. In this register, it's very important to have the right type of air. If you blow too hard and too fast, the notes don't have the full body. But if you blow too slowly, the notes won't come out at all. So you've got to find this kind of middle ground 
where you're able to keep each note having a full sound and being able to connect into the next note, whether it be up or down. So for this, I like to play the row shoe book. Um, and not the row shoe book in bass clef or bass clef down one octave. I play bass clef down two octaves and often I use no tongue and I just focus mainly on connecting each note. That is the most important thing because connecting notes in this register is very, very challenging, especially if you need to move in and out of a shift. So having a constant proper airflow going to support this range is very, very important and connecting each note is very, very important. So again, I use Roshu down two octaves like this. <laughs> So again, as you can see, I'm focusing only on connection here. I'm not trying to perform this, certainly. I'm focusing only on my air and connecting these notes in and out of my shift. So we've got a theme going here is that we expand our range and then we use another exercise to connect that range back to something that's comfortable. So if you're talking about pedals and extreme ped pedals, you're probably already comfortable in the valve register. So here, this next exercise is what I use to connect my pedal and extreme pedal register up back into the valve register. This is from Paul Felice's book, um, The Bass Trombone Daily Warm-Up. Uh, I love this book. There's a million great exercises, so you should really go pick it up. But this particular example is playing triplets with arpeggios and connecting from the pedal register into the valve register and then continuing down chromatically to connect the extreme pedal register into the valve register. While this isn't the most common range of the bass trombone, you don't see a lot of pedal C's, um, for example, unless you're playing m my arrangements that I do on this channel, and then they're all over the place. <laughs> but um, it's becoming more necessary to be able to play this type of stuff. Like I said, oftentimes you show up to a trombone choir reading or something, and you've got pedal C or D flat, and you've really got to play it and hold down for the whole ensemble. Or you may show up to a jazz band reading or some commercial recording and they really want you to just lay on some pedal tones. So being comfortable in this register, again, is becoming more and more important. So using these things to first expand the range and then connect the range back to what's comfortable, that's gonna be so useful, especially as a freelancer or someone who plays these more commercial or trombone choir things. Again, having this range is just gonna make it more comfortable for when you show up to a rehearsal and there's a pedal C sitting on your stand. <laughs> okay, so now that we've expanded our range down, we've got to head up. <laughs> so when we're talking about high range of the bass trombone, I again approach it in two ways. The same ways that I approach it down. First, expand the range and then connect to what's comfortable. So. To build up the higher register and to be able to play higher and higher notes, I use scales and I use other different exercises to expand this range. So the first exercise I'd like to show you is from the Lip Slurs book by Brad Edwards. Again, if you don't own this book, go pick it up. <laughs> this is one of the best books I've ever bought. Um, it's got these incredible very interesting lip slurs that are just going to help you build strength and help you to connect all the ranges. There's a million great exercises in here. Well, not a million, but there's a lot of great exercises in here. And this is just one example that I found particularly helpful to expand my high register. 
so this is playing notes against the grain, which means um, moving up while moving the slide out. So playing against the grain and expanding the register up. So check out this exercise here. So again, if you don't own this book, I'm going to put links in the description below. Go and buy all the books there. They're all worth it. I promise you, they're all worth it. So now to connect this higher register to something that's comfortable, right? That's our second step in range building. I used another exercise from my incredible teacher, Gabe Rice. Also, to my knowledge, Gabe Rice doesn't have a book yet. But if he ever does, you can guarantee that I'll be first in line to pick that up because he's given me so many great tips and tricks and ways to approach the bass trombone that I would I would buy a thousand of his books if he wrote a thousand of them. Anyway, back to it. This is a little exercise that starts comfortable and expands your range by leaping in fifths. Okay, so leaping in fifths is actually quite a bit each time. So you've got to start low on this one so that it's comfortable. So I start below the staff on the low F and then I leap in fifths and back down and move up chromatically. When you're doing this one at first, focus on air and connection. It might not be the cleanest thing you've ever played at first and that's okay because this is a wide range that we're working with here. But as it gets more comfortable and as this higher register gets more comfortable, it will be cleaner and cleaner and cleaner as you go up, okay? <laughs> Again, as you can tell, with this exercise, connection is the most important thing. I'm not on stage performing a concerto. I'm not worried about missing notes or whatever. I just want to make sure that I can connect from the most comfortable range for me up into a range that's not as comfortable. Okay, so now that you've seen a few exercises on how to expand your range by first expanding the range and then connecting to what's comfortable, it's up to you to go and seek out other exercises that are going to help you with this. The ones I've given you are just a starting point, so go and seek out new materials, new exercises, new ways of playing that help you to first expand the range and then to connect to what's comfortable. So if you enjoyed this little tutorial range video, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. If you're having some issue with range, leave a comment. I'd love to do my best to help or point you in the direction of someone who can help. Subscribe to the channel. I put out a new trombone video every week and you can see me play with some ridiculous range on all my cover videos. And I'm gonna put out some more of this tutorial, educational content. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss everything. Every week, new video. So click the little subscribe button down there and I will see you next week for an awesome cover.